Hey everyone, so I just got out of the shower if you could not tell. A while ago I showed in my PR haul, like a huge PR haul. I did buy this myself, it wasn't actually a PR package, but I just showed it in that video. A whole lot of stuff I bought from Sephora and basically what I did is I went through each category and I bought the highest user rated, so like customer rated beauty products in each category. So these are supposed to be like fan favorites and everything. However, I just went on the website and half of them are different now because obviously it depends on how many reviews are on there at the time. So some of these are no longer like the highest rated. <laughs> so that's completely my bad. I was supposed to film this like a month ago or something like that, but obviously I went over to Germany and I've had a lot of stuff happening. So I apologize that this is super late. If you do enjoy this video, regardless I will do another one maybe on like the lowest rated products or something like that and I'll do it a lot faster so that it's way more relevant but I thought I might as well still try this out because you know at one point in time these were all the highest rated products on each category on Sephora rated by the customers so I'm gonna see if they're actually good and if I agree with the reviews and I will look up each product on the Sephora website and read you a couple of the reviews on what people say as well so we can kind of see if I agree with the people's reviews okay so one one point in time a month or two ago this primer was the highest user rated primer on the website the thing is I only had a few reviews but it was the highest rated so it's what I picked up obviously if there's less reviews and you know if only three people rate it five star it's obviously gonna pop up near the top whereas you know an amazing primer that maybe has 30,000 reviews and it only comes out as like a four star is obviously going to pop up underneath so it's totally not even accurate but that's part of the fun right like that's part of the fun so this now has four stars on Sephora which is still really good so this is called the Bare Minerals Combo Control Milky Face Primer it says step up your makeup routine with a primer specifically formulated for your skin's needs helps to even out skin texture preparing it for a smoother foundation application and longer lasting wear milky to powder Powder texture dries to a natural finish, contains a special extract to absorb oil and reduce the appearance of pores, and specifically formulated to absorb oil in the T-zone and maintain skin's moisture balance. So it kind of sounds like it would be okay for most skin types. Someone said it controls their shine. Someone said it makes their skin feel super smooth even if they aren't wearing makeup. Someone else says it's beautiful for oily skin. Someone else already gave it two stars, so those people were five. This person gave it two stars saying it's nothing special. It makes them matte for a few hours and then they are back to oily and then the other person said nothing special three stars and they just said it's average it's not good it's not bad so let's try it sorry if this video is really long I feel like there's a lot of information but this is the packaging it's just like a normal like tube like just whatever oh it's a very like liquidy I guess that makes sense milky Oh, it feels quite nice. It feels quite thick, which is weird because it looks very runny. But when you massage it in, it feels like it's really filling in your pores. And I do have a history of liking Bare Minerals primers, so I hope I do like this one. It feels quite hydrating, um, but it still feels like it's kind of blurring my skin. You know what? It actually feels a lot like that Wet n Wild primer that I used in my drugstore full face first impression video. I'll link it down below, which kind of ended up being a massive mess. <laughs> like not good. Okay, regardless, I feel like this made my skin look amazing. It looks so beautiful I can see why someone would use it with no makeup. So now let's try it with some foundation on top So the foundation I have is the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation SPF 15 30 mil and I got the shade Fawn. Hopefully it matches me today I've got a bit of fake tan on so let's see what people have to say about this product This is an online exclusive it costs $85 and it's sold out in most of the colors So it must be pretty good if it's sold out and it has five star reviews but only has six reviews so one person said it lasts a good six hours without any touch-ups and they live in a really humid hot area someone else said it gives it really good coverage um, while not looking too cakey it does look traceless they said it's a traceless foundation so hopefully it doesn't look too heavy someone said it's super dewy it sits nicely on their skin people are basically just saying it's their holy grail foundation every single person loves it every single one of those six people so let's Let's see if I like it. Okay, so this is still one of the top rated foundations on Sephora at the moment while I'm filming this. And this is the packaging, by the way, just so you know, it's beautiful. I love Tom Ford makeup. I'm just gonna use a foundation brush today because I don't have a damp sponge. Oh my gosh, I know like people hate it when I apply my foundation like this. I do like little mini Instagram tutorials sometimes and every single time people are like, who even applies their foundation like that? I do okay, don't judge me. Okay, so I used about 
maybe a pump and a half all over my whole face. The pump is really easy to control and already on my finger it feels very soft. I'm just using a flat face brush. Ooh. Blends out so easy. The color is pretty good. It's a little bit pale for me, but I'll be able to wear it when I've got less fake tan on at least. I don't think the foundation loves the primer though, because it's kind of separating a little bit, but I think it's just the primer. I should have really looked that up when I got these, but I just, as I said, grabbed the top rated stuff off Sephora. So this happened. In terms of the way it applies, I love the way it applies. The coverage is really beautiful. It does look traceless. I would call it like a medium buildable kind of coverage. I'm going to build it up in a second just to double check that fact. So I'm gonna use about another pump. I'm just doing two half pumps. Maybe a little more. <laughs> I just grabbed a different brush. What am I doing? Oh my god. Okay, whatever. I think if you have redness, like discoloration, it's really good for that. It's not covering up my freckles as easily. Okay, it's sitting on my skin pretty well now. I guess the primer's kind of sunk in a little bit more maybe. Yeah, I think that is a beautiful finish. It is so radiant and just looks like skin almost. Okay, so so far I do like that foundation. I'm definitely gonna try that again another day. Okay, so for the concealer, it actually came up with a Sephora brand. This is the Make No Mistake High Coverage Concealer. And I have been known to really like a lot of Sephora products, usually the lip products. So I'm very intrigued to try this. I hate this stuff. This costs $14. It's had 133 reviews, which is a really decent amount to get a good feel of like the overall star rating, which is four and a half stars. That's pretty impressive. Someone says it's really creamy, pigmented, blendable. Um, someone else said they only need the tiniest amount to cover up all of their under eye circles and you definitely need to sit with powder to prevent creasing. Someone said they're finally able to say goodbye to their holy grail NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. That's one of my favorite concealers, so I'm excited to try this. And someone said it's opaque, creamy, and not cakey. I'm so excited to try this. So if you only need the tiniest amount, oh god, I'm just gonna start like that. It looks quite sticky. I'm gonna put a little bit around my nose and on it these breakouts too. Okay, I'm gonna have to cover that with foundation now because it's way too pale. By the way, I got the shade 2 Sesame and you get 10 ml of product, which is pretty decent. Definitely covering up my uh, redness on my eyelids and a little bit goes a really long way. I do feel like with this product, it blends very easy with your finger, to be honest. So it's quite sticky almost. Oh, too much around my nose. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Holy crap. I'm gonna like try to wipe some off with my brush. And for me, it's really sinking in to my under eye lines quickly. So you do definitely need to set this. I find it a little harder to work with, to blend. Like I can't figure out, like it seems to blend really well on the finger, but it takes ages. Just looks kind of streaky as well. Like no matter how much I blend it, it's just, I don't know, going streaky. So I don't know if I agree with the reviews. It's definitely not working so well for me as these other people. It's like no matter how much I blend it, it just doesn't look even. I think that's the best way to put it. Okay, so I've just found the powder top rated. So it's the Cojun Do Man My Fun Chi Press Powder, I think. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but this is it here. And this is rated five stars, but it's only got one review. And someone just said it's great for oily skin. And I have used this before. I can't even remember what I thought of it. I'm just going to use some on a smaller brush under my eyes to set this horrendous conceal. I really don't like it, to be honest, guys. Like, look at all my eyelids. It's just completely like not covered anything in the end so I'm just gonna buff some of this powder over. I think this is like a translucent color. I'm not sure. I already had this in my collection, by the way. Yeah, it just says natural finish, and this costs $66, so it's not cheap. It is Japanese, so just using that to set under my eyes. Oh my god, my under eyes look so ugly. I hate it. Ugh. I'll show you up close in a second. Um, I'll just set my face first, so I'm just using a powder brush. Oh. This is a nice setting powder for something that's translucent. It just mattifies, but it doesn't like mattify too much. It leaves your skin looking really natural still. The only place where the foundation and primer and stuff looks bad is on my nose, but I think it's because I put that concealer on top and the concealer just, I don't know, it just does not agree with my skin. Either that or it doesn't agree with the foundation or anything. Look under my eyes, look how ugly that concealer looks. I am not a fan. Next up, the highest rated um, face spray on Sephora for a while was the Lila B Aglo Face Mist. I've never tried this brand in my life. This cost $48, which is fairly pricey. And you get 30 ml of product. Let's have a look. I just wanna put some of this on now to kind of hopefully settle some of that 
conceal. I don't think it's gonna do anything, but I just wanna put some on, okay? <laughs> oh, that looks fancy. It's very small. Compared to all nighter, you get 118 mil. <laughs> And then this one you get 30 mil. Oh my god, it's so expensive. Beautiful packaging. I mean, this stuff better be good because that's expensive. Um, it's a hydrating mist rich in natural ingredients from earth and sea to leave the skin balanced and rejuvenated. You can use it to prep your face, set makeup, or refresh and hydrate at any time. This was rated four and a half stars, 23 reviews, so that's pretty good, like quite high rated. And it's good for any skin type. Pretty much it just says it helps to maintain a flawless comp complexion. Blah, blah, blah. It smells very similar to the Gerard Cosmetics setting sprays, like that kind of like general smell they have. Maybe like lavender. And it feels more like a face mist rather than a setting spray. Like I'd probably rather use this on bare skin, just as like a refresher. Like, oh, it looks really wet now. Whoops. On my makeup, I feel like it is super heavy. It feels really heavy. Like it doesn't feel as light as the Urban Decay, for example. It feels a lot almost thicker which sounds weird because it's like a water but I mean I'm just calling it like I feel it. You know what the more this sinks in though like I do like the way it has left my skin looking it's very glowy so like because I like this kind of look I feel like I will get my use out of it but I still stand by what I said it's so heavy feeling. Okay next up we have the Makeup Forever Brow Liner. This is no longer at the top of the page. This costs $23. I got it in the shade 20 which is blonde. It was rated 4.4 out of 5 which is really decent still. Some Someone said it's a felt tip. Oh no, I hate felt tip brow products. Oh god, this could be a disaster. Okay, anyway. People said it's the best felt tip liner they've tried though. Like, people have said they have tried so many pencils, pens, pomades, and this one makes them want to start a long-term committed relationship with it. <laughs> Man, I hope I like this because I usually don't, I'm not gonna lie. I will try to be as like clean slated as possible. This is a fresh product. No bad experiences from the past will alter my opinion on this. It's a new product. Let's try this. Okay, it looks way different from any other felt I've tried. It looks like an eyeliner felt almost. So weird. Okay. Oh god, it's quite pigmented. Hm. I'm gonna have to tidy that up a bit. I'm kind of going haywire already. This is so much better than the ones I've tried in the past. It's a little bit hard to control though. So it's really stiff. I totally do not hate this. I'm so surprised. I feel like it's really like thickening too. Oh my god, that's so not bad at all. Color's pretty good too. It's a very like cool toned blonde color. I was worried it was gonna be way too pale for me because I like darker brows, but it's still quite dark. That makes me very, very excited. The worst thing about it is, yeah, I'm kind of clumsy, but we can just clean that out with some concealer. That is such a bad shape. What am I doing? Um, I feel like it'd be easier to use if I like used a brush with it, just like put my brush on the tip because I really like the form. I just don't know about the actual little applicator. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just like taking me way longer. I am a fan of this. Oh my gosh, pleasantly surprised. Looks really sharp too. Like if you love that bold eyebrow look, it's super like Okay, so for the top rated eyeshadows, it's coming out with the Naked Vault by Urban Decay. So I'm just going to use a naked palette on my eyes today and I'll keep it really simple because I mean, we already know I love the naked palettes. Here it is here, $195 for way more value and it comes with, you know, lipsticks, eyeshadows and stuff like that. I am going to use the OG Naked. I have not touched this in so long. This is one of my favorite palettes of all time. I don't know why I just don't use it more often. I guess because like we all went through that phase where everyone just used naked palettes 24 7 and I guess I wanted to use new stuff so I just put this at the back of my drawer but it really is one of the most amazing palettes so throwback time I'm gonna start with naked which is just like a crease color and I'm gonna pop that in at the crease this is a firm blender brush because of beauty and then I'm going to take buck which is a slightly darker brown on another firm blender brush I'm kind of going on the inner and outer corners. So these eyeshadows are incredibly blendable, really amazing if you don't have a naked palette. I definitely recommend it. I like the Naked 1 and 2 the best. The third one's okay. I don't like Naked Smoky and I don't really use the Naked Basics either. I'm going back in with Naked just under my eyes. And then I'm going to take an angled eye brush and take Virgin, which used to be my favorite color, if you could not tell. And she is going to go on the brow bone. And on the inner corner, just to keep up the super glowy look. 
And then I'm just going to take a little bit of half baked on my finger, which is like a gold color. And I'm just going to put that on the middle of my eyelid. Look at eye makeup is so simple. Moving along to another product I have not tried. This product right here, Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. This is in the shade Deeper, and this is so long. Where's an eyeliner I can compare it to? Well, here's a Maybelline lip pencil. Like, it's so long. Double sided, okay. So this costs $57. It is out of stock currently. Um, and it's still rated four and a half stars after 43 reviews, so that's really highly rated. People were just saying that both sides of the pen provide the purest black line. People say it's so easy to use. They say it's super smooth. They say it's the best eyeliner period, and they've tried Kat Von D Steel, the Balm Ciate, etc. So let's give it a go for ourselves. Okay, so how does this work? This side, okay, this is like the tiniest little pen tip I've ever seen in my life. It is so small. And then the side is more like your regular um, size. So I'm going to try the regular side first. Ooh, it's so sharp. Oh my God, it really does give you like the most perfect line. There's no bleeding. Super easy to use. Oh God, crap. Very black. And the little brush tip has a little bit of flexibility to it, which I really like. It's nice and easy. Oh my God. You really can get a really sharp line. I don't want to like this because it's very expensive. That's so sharp. Okay, I'm going to try the smaller brush on the inner corner. It's so little. I actually find this way harder to use. I'm going to go back to the long one. I'm going to go up nice and close so you can see how sharp that line is. So far, I really, really like this eyeliner. Wow. I could probably make it a little bit straighter, but I'm scared it's going to go so thick. It's so black. Oh my god, I love this. Oh, that's so crooked. Wow. My eyeliner just got so thick. Look at the state of that. That's hideous. I was just talking about how easy it is to apply and what happens. Oh my god, that's ugly. Wow. Okay, how am I gonna fix this? Oh my god, it stays put. I can't even wipe it off because it's just so smudge proof. It will not come off. Well, it looks like this is my life today. So yeah, don't judge me for my eyeliner today. It's not going anywhere. It's, that's it. I don't know how to get this off now. I definitely do like this a lot, but just be careful because once it's on, it's on. Okay, mascara time. Okay, so the mascaras have changed quite a bit. I have the Roller Lash by Benefit, which I actually really like. I prefer this to their real, the their real mascara. I really like this. I've shown this in a few videos. It's $24, rated 4.6 out of five with 84 reviews. So that's really, really, really good. People are just saying it's really good, long lasting. It does exactly what it says it will. So if you've never seen the wand before, this is how it looks. By the way, all the top rated um, mascaras on Sephora right now are all like, gift sets, like Christmas ones with minis, which I don't own. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how this performs. I really do like this one. Okay. Okay, so here's one coat. I have no idea if you can see past the eyeliner, but I really like it. It's not like my favorite mascara in the world. It's just one of those ones that I like. I'll happily use. It does the job. I definitely do think it's one of my favorite curling mascaras. I am going to use the Thunder Lashes by Exo Beauty. These are faux mink lashes. They go sideways. You can see how super fluffy they are. Like they are just so voluminous and silky smooth. Okay, I'm going to let these sit there and stick. Like, let the glue continue to stick down. For bronzer slash contour, something limited edition popped up, which was kind of funny. Hopefully it's still available because I'm doing this so late. I am the worst. I am sorry. Okay, it's out of stock currently, but it's still on the website. So hopefully you guys can sign up for the out of stock notification. It's $59 and it's called the Abord de Plage Highlighting and Bronzing Palette. And it is exclusive to Sephora. Let's have a look at it. I love NARS, like, face products. They're so beautiful. I have a lot in my personal collection. So this comes with some highlighters and sun wash diffusing bronze. Oh, okay. So really, like, you could just use Laguna or Casino because it's got Laguna and Casino in it. Um, and I have a different highlighter I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to use Laguna and Casino and bronze and contour. To bronze, I'm just going to use actually the darker shade, which is Casino. This is a tulip powder brush. I love the finish. That is Laguna and Casino all over my bronzer and contour area. I contoured with Laguna, which isn't like the perfect contouring color, but oh well. When I put in a contouring into Sephora, that's the palette that showed up as 
top rated. By the way, it's got 116 reviews and it's been rated 4.6 out of 5, so really highly. For blush, I am so excited that this popped up as top rated. It is Vizia or Visa. I never know how to pronounce it. Vizia, maybe? Um, this brand is so expensive. I have a few of the eyeshadow palettes, but this is a blush palette and I'm so excited. I don't often wear blush anymore. By the way, this is in Rose Coral. Um, but just because it's this brand, I love this brand. I'm like really excited. So let's see what other people said about it. So it's $80, which is so expensive, but you do get six different colors. Um, and it's rated five stars with 16 reviews. So everyone that's tried it seems to love it. They say they're very pigmented, so a little goes a long way. Long lasting, they've never had to touch up. I have no idea what color to use. They all look so intense. I'm gonna use this color because it intrigues me. My chilla powder brush again. Oh my god, that's so pretty. It is very pigmented. I use the smallest amount of my brush. Oh my god, it's so nice. Oh, too much. Okay, way too much. Now for highlighter. Oh my god, I love this blush. <gasps> Honestly, you guys don't get the full effect of how beautiful that tone is. Oh my god. I feel like if you're a makeup artist, this palette would be perfect because you have it colors for any skin tone. There are pale ones and deep bright ones. So you could go from super fair skin to super deep skin and you'll be sweet. I'm so impressed. Man. Ah, okay, the highlighter that showed up is this one here, Antonym. I've never tried this brand either, so this is a little bit exciting. Okay, oh, it looks cool. Okay, it's $42. It's in the shade Endless Summer, which is a pink champagne that's right up my alley. Um, and it has dropped back a bit in reviews, so we will see how good it is. It is now rated 3.8 out of 5, so this is the lowest rated product we have tried today so far. And it's because it has been given two two-star ratings to bring it down a bit. But people are saying it's a beautiful finishing powder. People have said that they haven't been able to put it down. It gives their skin a natural lit from within a glow. See this sounds right up my alley because that's like my Exo Beauty highlighters. They're good all over or as a natural highlight. Some people say that they are disappointed um, because it's a dark color. It looks like I had put bronzer on the top of my cheeks. Ah! Um, yeah, when I purchased this, it was rated super high. Obviously, it was the top rated one at the time. Oh my god, this is so weird. Look at the packaging. It's like a wooden block. Like, legit. And then this is what the color looks like. Okay, it definitely doesn't look very light. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dampen my brush with the setting spray I got. It does look glittery. I'm so scared. Okay, this is wet and I can't even friggin' see it on my face. Okay, here we go. It's starting to show up. This isn't even as intense as my XO Beauty ones, which are natural. But the XO Beauty ones are very buildable. This is the third layer and, like, it's still so subtle. Fourth layer. This is way more subtle than the Too Faced ones. You know, those natural ones by Too Faced. Fifth layer. Sixth layer. Is this the 100 layer challenge? Like, this is what XO Beauty would look like after, like, two layers. Seventh layer. Oh yeah, it's quite glittery. Like, it really shows up the um, imperfections on my face. Okay, I'm off to do 10 layers on the other side of my face now. You know what, I give up. I don't like that. I'm gonna go back into my NARS palette and use one of these highlighters because they look so pretty. I'm gonna use actually a little bit of a gold to go with my eye makeup. Maybe this one, which is like a lighter gold. And I'm not gonna wet the brush. The brush is dry by now. Already, that's so much more. Like, these ones are quite shimmery, they're quite intense, like metallic. Metallic's a good word. But I just am in that mood today. Like, this is just glittery and barely even there. Like, it's not good. And this is one layer, and it's way more wet looking. I'm just like drenching my skin in it. I love the look of it. It's so nice. Big fan of this palette. Like, I'm sorry, but this is a million times better than that other one. Not a fan. And then I'm going to reset my face with a little bit of this, even though I don't like the way it feels. Like, definitely by now it doesn't feel heavy, but it feels really heavy at first. But I just want to make my skin look uber glowy again. It smells identical to the Gerard Cosmetics Lavender one. That's what it is. Lips now. So I've got two products. Okay, this I think is the lip liner that showed up. And then I got a matching top rated liquid lipstick kind of situation. Oh, okay. So this is a dual lipstick and lip liner. And then I think this must be what came up when I searched top rated gloss. So this is it here. It costs $28. I have the shade Bahama Breeze. It's a matte finish. It's been rated five stars with nine reviews. I've never tried this 
brand before either, Wanda Beauty, so I'm so excited. So people are saying it is innovative, it works, um, it's cruelty free, which people love. Um, it's a lip liner and lipstick together that's easy to use, perfect in color, and doesn't cost a million dollars. Excellent pigmentation. I have to say, I think it looks really ugly. It's just a really awkward packaging, but the quality feels amazing. The packaging color is really cool, it, like deep reddish metallic color. Okay, so I'm assuming this is the liner. It's just a wind up liner. So that is the color of the lip liner. I'm a huge fan of that. It's a really beautiful color. And then the lipstick, ooh, it's like one of those rounded tip, which weirds me out. It looks like a pretty color. Yeah, it is really creamy, but it's still matte. It feels really good. Don't do what I did. I just left it out a little bit, and then I put the lid on it and crushed it, and it's all gross now. I'm such an idiot. Now let's do the lip gloss, even though I don't normally wear lip gloss that often. So this is Milk Makeup. I've only tried a couple of times, this brand. It's the Lip Vinyl, and it's in the shade Chillin'. And this costs $24, and it is rated 4.7 out of 5, with 7 reviews. People are just saying that they are super true to color. The color stays on and it feels very comfortable on the lips. The formula is thick and opaque with just the right amount of gloss. However, it is transfer prone and sticky. Oh yeah, I can tell it's sticky like the like resistance on the tube, like pulling it out. It's not as thick and sticky as they made it sound. I don't think it's that sticky at all. In fact, I actually quite like it. This is the applicator, by the way. It's just a little doe foot applicator. It doesn't really smell like anything, and it looks really pretty. Maybe if you put on, like, a crap ton of this, it would be sticky or, like, thick, but... It's very, it's like not that bad. So there we have it. I'm just gonna go blow dry my hair so we can get the complete finished effect. Okay, so let's quickly go through the products. Primer, I definitely want to try some more. I really liked the way it made my skin look and feel, but obviously with the foundation, it did not go very good. The foundation, I love the finish. I love the kind of coverage, like the medium kind of buildable coverage. I just think it looked really beautiful on my skin and it looked really youthful and glowy and healthy. The concealer was a no from me, did not like it. The powder, I do like. It's a good translucent pressed setting powder. It is very expensive though and you can probably find better ones for way cheaper. The bronzer palette by NARS, I love this so much. If you guys can pick it up, I definitely recommend it. Otherwise you can get the bronzers separately. Separately. I do own them separately. The blush palette, I adore. I want to keep using this. That color, well, that color there. Oh my gosh, like I just think that is so pretty. Like so beautiful for summer. We're coming up to summer here in New Zealand. I'm so excited. The highlighter, no from me. Did not enjoy that. The brows, I actually really ended up enjoying. Love it to be honest. Like it feels really nice and stuck in place. I didn't use a brow gel either, but it's still kind of stuck my hairs down and it looks so sharp and beautiful. The eyeshadow palette, obviously I love that. The eyeliner, love it. It's just so hard to fix if you screw up, but it is really easy to use. I think I was just having a bad eyeliner day. I'm so going to continue to use this. However, I don't really like the mini side, which surprised me. The mascara, I really like. It's not my favorite of all time mascara, but it's definitely my favorite curling mascara. Lashes, obviously I love these, but they're not on Sephora. These are on Exo Beauty Shop. Com. The lipstick I enjoyed. I don't know if it's something I would like go out and buy all of the colors just because the packaging weirds me out a little bit, but I can definitely see for people that, you know, just want a minimal makeup bag. It's really handy because it's two in one and it's not too big. I love the color as well. Like it's definitely a good product. I just don't know if I'm going to rush out and get any more of them. And then the lip gloss, I probably still wouldn't reach for this all the time just because I don't use lip gloss all the time, but I definitely don't think it's bad and I don't think it's as thick and sticky as people say, but I did use a very thin layer. And then the setting spray, I definitely don't think it's worth the money. It's such a small amount for the cost. It's quite heavy feeling. It's very fragrant. If you don't like lavender, you will hate this. But I do love the way it makes my skin look, to be honest. Like, it just makes my skin absolutely glow. So, I probably still will use this. And who knows, it might grow on me. Like, maybe when I get used to the formula of it, I might like it a lot more. So, I think I talked about everything. I hope so. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you guys want me to do a worst of Sephora like all of the low rated makeup on Sephora. I think it could be a really fun video to see if they're as bad as people say. Or if you have any other requests, just let me know. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave me some love heart emojis down below so I can go through and like your comments. I really appreciate the support. It really does help my videos get out there some more with the new algorithms, like the more comments and likes I get, obviously. The wider reach my
my videos do reach. So I really do appreciate the help and I genuinely just love reading your guys' comments anyway. So leave me a comment and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Mwah. Bye.